Now that I have reassembled the power supply, I'd like to plug it in and see how it works. So let's get that going. Let's try it out. Okay, so we have the display, it's blue LEDs. Up top we have the voltage, under there we have the amperage. The output is disengaged and if you want to turn the output on, you have to engage it by pressing on. As you can see, it goes in constant voltage mode. There are no amps flowing, the voltage is at 32 volts. And as you can hear, there is a buzzer, I find it a bit annoying. And you can turn the buzzer off by pressing save for three seconds. So now the buzzer is turned off. You press any button, no buzzer. Yeah, that's awesome. One way to change the output value is to push AV to select whether you want amperage or voltage to change and then change it with the knob, with the rotary knob. To move the digit, you press the rotary knob and then you can move it up and down. What I like is if you get to the higher number with your digit, then the next digit moves up and down. That's quite nice. So you don't have to manipulate every digit. Let's put in 12 volts and hit enter. Enter is to confirm your selection and the same with the amperage. You can dial it down, push the button to select another digit and it moves in the scales. So you don't have to manipulate every digit. The other way to change your value is to hit this button for amperage or voltage and then this button to select your digit and then this button to increase your digit. The higher order digits don't move up if you do it with a button. So I think the primary use would be the knob because it's just more convenient. It's also nice to hear that it is completely quiet. There is no load attached and the fan is standing still. It's not spinning at all. So there is a temperature regulation in here, which is very nice to have. Another nice feature is that you have four pre-selected values that you can program yourself. For example, if you want 12 volts and maximum one amps available to you at the push of a button, you just hit save, save lights up, and then the button or the letter where you want it saved. For example, like, I want 12 volts saved at C, so I press the button C. Let's try it out with the output. We have 15 volts, press A for three seconds, hit enter, and it's going down. Because of the capacitance in the outputs, it takes a bit with no load attached. And we are at 3.3 volt. Yeah. Let's hit five volts. And instantly we have five volts. So yeah, great feature to have. Another nice feature to have is the lockout. So maybe you've selected your desired voltage and you don't want your colleagues messing with your power supply. You just lock the interface, you press the button for three seconds, lock lights up, and this means that the buttons for voltage selection are disabled. So you don't accidentally change your value. You can only turn on or off your output and that's it. But the other buttons are disabled. So that's also nice to have. Another nice feature this power supply has is the overcurrent and over voltage protection. And because that's a bit confusing with this power supply and difficult to explain, I have changed my setup. So the Fluke is wired in to measure the output voltage. The Gossen is wired in to measure the output current. And attached to the power supply, I have a 220 ohm bleed resistor for the capacitance, so it drops the voltage faster. And also I have this adjustable constant current driver I built a few years ago. It's been really a long time. It, it was just sitting in my parts bin. So this was originally an adjustable constant current driver, but in this application, it's just an adjustable high power resistor. So in normal operation, you can select your desired voltage and your limit for your amperage. And if you turn it on normally, it will keep these limits. Now it's in constant voltage mode. It keeps the output at nine volts and currently it provides 75 milliamps. So let me decrease the resistance to show you that it then goes into constant current mode. 
200 milliamps, 300, 400. And now we are at 500 milliamps and now we are in constant current mode. So it keeps the 500 milliamps and it changed the output to 6.6 .6 volts to accommodate for the changed resistance in my high power transistor. So the difference between normal operation and overcurrent protection is that it, in the case of overcurrent protection, it disengages the output. Let me show you that. And now let's engage the overcurrent protection by selecting current selection and then pressing save to enable this dot. This dot means that it's now in overcurrent protection mode. The output is engaged. We are showing 9 volts on the fluke and it currently draws approximately 300 milliamps. So let's reduce the resistance of the load and increase the current. 400, 50, 60 and now it went into constant current mode. It, it switched to CC, constant current mode, but it also switched off the output. As you can see on the fluke, the output voltage is zero volts and the output current is also zero amps. But on the display it shows 9 volts, 500 milliamps drawn and that the output is on. That's what's so confusing to me. You, it shows that the output is on, but there is no voltage provided and there is no current. That's not that great, it's really confusing and I don't know why they did this. I wouldn't have done it this way. I would have disabled this indicator when the output was switched off and kept it going to CC so you know something happened with overcurrent protection. And yeah, that's the annoying thing. So let me show you over voltage protection. So now I'm in constant current mode. I have one amp flowing through the load and my output voltage is 5 volts, as you can also see on the fluke. Now I'm gonna engage the over voltage protection. This thing is so annoying. This is a bug. It should work right now, but it doesn't. Let's try that again. So I've selected 9 volts and 1 amp, and we are in constant current mode. Let's select now over voltage protection by going to voltage, enabling over voltage protection, and engaging the output. But once again, it doesn't work. It should work. What are we gonna do? It doesn't work like it's supposed to. So now we're in constant current mode. And if I want to engage the over voltage protection, I have to select voltage, push safe to engage the over voltage protection, which is enabled now. And it turns off the output, but it shouldn't be doing that. I don't know what that is, but I can't get it to work like it's supposed to. And the way it's supposed to work is when I decrease the resistive value of my load and the voltage goes up, that it's supposed to switch off when it reaches the preset value, like 15 volts, 12, 13, 15. Now it should have been switched off, but it doesn't. I don't know, something is wrong with this. If it's the unit or if it's a bug with all of them, yeah, that's bad. I mean, the overcurrent protection in constant voltage mode works but the over voltage protection in constant current mode doesn't work. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. So once again, let me show you the over current protection mode. We are in constant voltage mode. I have selected 12 volts and one amp. And now we're currently at 12 volts and drawing 730 milliamps. Let me engage. And now that I have engaged over current protection, once I decrease the resistance of the load and thereby increase the current consumption, and once I reach one amp, it will shut off the output like it's supposed to. So over current protection does work. 920, 30, 70, 90, and boom, we were over one amp and it shut off the output as we can see. That's how it's supposed to work but the over voltage protection in constant current mode doesn't work and it's annoying. Let's disengage that. Let's try uh, a lower amperage value. Let's try like 300 milliamps. Let's try with a low value. 
So we have 12 volts, 300 milliamps. Let's engage the output. So we're now at 300 milliamps and an output of 4.7 volts. Let's engage the over voltage protection and it immediately shuts off. So I can't get the over voltage protection to work properly. I think the over voltage protection on this power supply doesn't work. And if you have the same power supply and yours work, please leave me a comment below. Also leave me a comment below if you've seen a mistake I made or if you have the same experience I have with this power supply. So another function this power supply should have is a timer on the output. It states after power on the output. So the output is powered on. We have one amp draw and eight volts output. Double click the save key, then the voltage of the display window turns into 0000, zero, zero, zero for hours and minutes. In this state, set a good time. Press enter key to confirm the power timer starts countdown. Time will automatically shut off the output and the buzzer will alarm D, 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 three sounds. View the remaining time is also double click the save key. So once you have engaged the output, which I have done, the output is engaged, you double press the save key. And this should turn into a selection of an hour and minutes, but it doesn't. Nothing happens. The timer function doesn't exist or doesn't work. So I don't know if that's just my unit at fault or if it's just genuinely it doesn't work. They didn't get the firmware right. Also in the Chinese version, it says double press the enter key. And there is no mention of the save key in the Chinese version. But in the English version, it states double press the save key. But yeah, it just doesn't work and the manual is inconsistent. I don't know. So the timer output doesn't work. Now I'd like to test out the auto test function. To enable the auto test function, you have to press the on button for three seconds. One, two, three, until all the pre-selector indicators light up. And the manual it states, long time press A, this key, to enter the voltage or current minimum judgment threshold set. Short time to press A key to switch voltage or current. Short time press save key to save. A lights flashing three times, but it doesn't do it. So I'm pressing for three seconds. I have amperage low value to select the voltage value. I have to press it short, but it just doesn't do it. Well, let's try the amperage. If this is amperage, amperage low, let's enter amperage low. Let's make one amp. Enter, then select amperage high. Let's make that two amps. Enter, then select the duration time. That's two seconds. That's okay. To set the current window flashing, the threshold. Okay. Let's do a threshold of 1.5. Let's just see what happens at 1.5. So I have selected a lower limit of one amp and a higher limit of two amp and the threshold of one and a half amps. I am below one amp. Let's see what happens if I crank up the amperage. Nothing happens. Yeah, nothing happens again. I don't know. It's I can't get the auto test function to work. I'm getting really annoyed by this power supply. None of the higher functions work. The auto test function doesn't work. The overcurrent protection does work. The over voltage protection, I couldn't get it to work properly. Timed output also doesn't work. I mean, yeah, I don't know if the user manual is at fault or they just didn't get the firmware right for this thing. Either way, it doesn't work and yeah, too bad. Some of these functions were actually quite useful, like the timed output or the auto test function. But yeah, too bad. 
now that I have tried out this power supply, what's my overall opinion? Well, overall, I quite like it. It is a switch mode power supply. It is also lightweight compared to the other linear power supplies. It has a nice format. I like that it's narrow and higher. It doesn't use as much space on my desk. The basic function works. It has also a nice feature of programmable pre-selects, which I find quite useful. So at a touch of a button, you get a programmed value up. So it makes it quicker to work with. But other than that, it also has a few issues. First of all, like half of the promised functions don't work. I couldn't get the auto dust function to work. I couldn't get the over voltage protection function to work. I couldn't get the timed output to work. I don't know if that's just this unit or they are all like this because the firmware is, just isn't right. Also, there are small issues with the build quality, like the way too small screw on the casing or the wrong screws, for example, fastening the heatsink. And another huge issue is, is that this switch mode power supply doesn't have a power factor correction in it, which actually makes it illegal to distribute in the EU. Yeah, it would have been easy to comply with that regulation, but I choose to save a few bucks. This unit cost me 57 euros to deliver to my door. And compared with the output capability of 30 volts and 10 amps, it's okay, I guess, but... Um, so I'm quite disappointed because there is a lot of potential in this power supply, especially considering the, the powerful microchip they got in here. That's an ARM Cortex-M0 with a lot of power and uh, yeah, it could have been a lot better. Kind of disappointed, but once again, you get what you pay for. One other thing is I'm definitely in the mood to destroy something right now and I would like to go for these stupid load wires. I'm just gonna roast them. Let's short circuit those. And let's turn it on and see what happens. So we are at one amp. Let's increase the current. 10 amps, go. Cable is at 63 degrees as you can see. 63, 80, 90, 125. And within the power supply, there are a few parts, 40 degrees. The fan is also running, you can hear it. So this is the result of the thin load wire torture test. And as you can see, the plastic on the black plug melted quite considerably. And this is the reason why you don't use a thin wire like this for high amperage application, because all the electrical energy that the power supply puts out gets converted into heat at the point of highest resistance. And in this example, it was this black plug, and this why it got hot and the plastic melted, so it was considerable. Uh, I've measured 120 degrees with the thermal imaging camera, and I'm guessing it got a lot hotter. And something like this can easily start a fire, and here you see why. Throw it in the bin. That's it for the review of this KPS 3010D switch mode power supply. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please leave me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That's it. Have a good one. I see you another time. Bye.